Tony, why does it matter what the terms of his exit are if John Delaney was contractually entitled to it? Well, I think it hugely matters because the optics of this situation are very important. There's a, a sense that the Anshan regime, the old FAI, uh, had corporate governance practices that weren't the best, to say the least, and that the new regime, uh, the new FAI coming into play now, uh, should have a different mentality and a different... Uh... Time. Tony, why does it matter what the terms of his exit are if John Delaney was contractually entitled to it? Well, I think it hugely matters because the optics of this situation are very important. There's a, a sense that the Anshan regime, the old FAI, uh, had corporate governance practices that weren't the best, to say the least, and that the new regime, uh, the new FAI coming into play now, uh, should have a different mentality and a different, uh, a diff different way of operating. Brendan Menton, a former um, general secretary of the organisation, said it there, uh, and people feel they need to know. Also, as long as we don't know the details, all sorts of uh, rumours can get into the public domain. Some suggestion that the settlement package was as much as €350,000 and a, a source here at FAI headquarters told me today that a lot of staff are angry about that because that could equate to almost 10 years salary for most of the people who work here. Okay, Tony O'Donoghue, thanks for that update. One year on from the murder of Saudi Arabian journalist Jamal Khashoggi, the heir to the throne there has denied ordering the killing but said that as leader he had to take responsibility. Saudi's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman also warned that oil prices could rise sharply if the world does not act to deter Iran. It's almost a year since journalist Jamal Khashoggi was tortured and killed after entering the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, Turkey. The heir to the Saudi throne is suspected of personally targeting the US-based writer. In an interview with CBS, he accepted some responsibility, but denied any personal involvement. Absolutely not. This was a heinous crime. But I take full responsibility as a leader in Saudi Arabia, especially since it was committed by individuals working for the Saudi government. He said that the attacks on Saudi Arabia's oil supplies earlier this month were an act of war by Iran, but he urged a political and peaceful solution. If the world does not take a strong and firm action to deter Iran, we will see further escalations that will threaten world interests. Oil supplies will be disrupted and oil prices will jump to unimaginably high numbers that we haven't seen in our lifetimes. As the kingdom attempts to open itself up to tourism, the Crown Prince was also asked about women's rights and the jailing of female activists. He said he might personally disagree with some laws, but he said they must be respected until they are reformed. Eleanor Burnhill, RTE News. At least two people have died in a fire at the Moria refugee and migrant camp on the Greek island of Lesbos. Residents later set fires and clashed with police because of overcrowding at the facility. The fire broke out in a container inside the Moria camp on Lesbos. Many refugees and migrants are housed in containers because of overcrowding. Aid agencies say a woman and a child died in the blaze, which was extinguished by a plane. Later, riots developed with residents demanding to be transferred to the Greek mainland. The crowds were angry at the time authorities took to respond to the incident. Police fired tear gas to stop the protests. Many were left distressed by the tense atmosphere inside the camp. The former military base hosts around 12,000 people but has facilities for just 3,000. <laughs> Greece has taken in some 70,000 refugees and migrants who have fled Syria, Afghanistan and several African countries. Recently, the number of arrivals has been steadily increasing from neighbouring Turkey. The Greek government is looking at a new asylum draft law to deal with the latest migrant crisis. Dimitri O'Donnell, RTE News. In northeastern India, more than 100 people have died since Thursday after retreating monsoon rains caused massive flooding. Floodwaters have risen to over two metres and in some areas are the worst to occur over four decades. Rainfall in September was almost 50% above normal. The monsoon is expected to last several more days. Now, still to come on the lunchtime news. How will Hurricane Lorenzo impact on Ireland? The large and powerful storm is moving this direction.
time for change. New Amsterdam is America's first public hospital. I know the history. The dean makes me tell it to every medical director. And how many of those have you worked with? Five. Will everyone in the cardiac surgical department please raise your hands? You're all fired. Oh, I am serious. We're going to be starting over. Tell me what your patients need. I don't care if it's not covered. I don't care if the board said no. Let's be doctors again. A new series, New Amsterdam, starts Wednesday at 9 on RTE2. Mara and Dahi are back for a fun-filled season of today. Cooking, fashion tips, beauty experts, makeovers, interior design, travel, great stories, celebrity guests. Did I forget anything, Mara? Well, we're giving away thousands of euro every day as well. Oh yeah, great competitions and lots more. Today, weekdays at 3.30 on RTE1. Do not be late. We'll see you then. See you then. Huh. You're very welcome back. Met Erin has said that it is closely monitoring Hurricane Lorenzo, a large and very powerful hurricane that has developed over the central Atlantic. The hurricane, which has been upgraded to a level five storm, is tracking northeastwards and approaching the Azores. Head of forecasting at Met Erin, Evelyn Cusack, has said it is impossible to predict how Hurricane Lorenzo will affect Ireland, but the storm's trajectory should become clearer over the next 48 hours. Well, our science and environment correspondent George Lee is here. George, can you describe to us what this hurricane looks like? And uh, as Evelyn Cusack said, we'll know more in the next 48 hours. But what does it look like at the moment? It's absolutely massive. If you take from the centre of this hurricane to where the, the hurricane force winds would end, that's 150 kilometres from the centre. So 300 kilometres wide hurricane force wind with an eye in the centre. Tropical force winds are 405 kilometres out from the centre. So from both sides, that's like a circle of 800 kilometres. It's absolutely enormous. It's up to level five. It may well weaken uh, in the next day or two, they're saying, but it's coming in a direction where it is the most powerful storm ever that has been this, this, e this far east and this far north in the Atlantic. It's co come through a break in the subtropical ridge in the Atlantic, which is an unusual occurrence. We don't get these things that often. And it's moving in the direction. It's about 28 or 29 degrees latitude. That's how low down it is. We're about 54, for instance, in the centre of Ireland. So it's moving in our direction from where it is, and the Azores Islands are right in the middle. So it's coming at a, at a rate at the moment, quite slow at about 20 kilometres per hour, but it's very, very powerful, and it's likely to hit the Azores with significant rain over the next, uh, certainly by the end of tomorrow. And then it's a question of what direction it takes, and that's where the uncertainty is, because it's so far out, and the models which forecasters use are saying it could continue in this direction, actually come even further into our direction, or it could go off towards Iceland, and that's what we're waiting to see. But what they're saying is either way, in Ireland, the coastal waters are going to be extremely dangerous over the next couple of days, uh, with very large swells, life-threatening swells. So anybody who is anywhere near the coast or anywhere out in boats needs to be very, very conscious of that. They're saying if it were to come in our direction, it could hit us by some time on Thursday. But again, it depends on what happens. So there's a great deal of uncertainty, but a great deal of potential danger, and they're watching it like hawks. OK, George Lee, thanks for that update. Now, the county Monaghan town of Glasslock has been awarded the title of Ireland's tidiest town. The winners of the long-running competition were announced during a ceremony at the Helix at DCU this morning. Our reporter, Laura Hogan, is there for us this lunchtime. Laura, who's celebrating Glasslock? Obviously, others too. 
which are lots of towns and villages all around the country celebrating this afternoon after receiving awards here at the Helix in Dublin. And as you say, the award for Ireland's tidiest town has been handed over to Glasslock in County Monaghan. And just off the stage in the last few minutes, and joining us now are Richard Corrigan and Louise Duffy from Glasslock's um, Tidy Towns Committee. Richard, you beat off competition from over 900 entrants this year. What gave Glasslock the edge? Well, um, uh, Glasslaw has been tipping at it for the last 41 years. From the last time that we won it, I wasn't born. I'm involved now in a right few years, but um, yeah, the, it's uh, reading up reports from uh, recent years and previous years, working on that, uh, getting the whole village involved, i.e. your schools, your uh, residents, your businesses, everybody all involved, taking criticism from um, previous years, working on that, Getting, um, getting to the top where we are today took quite some time, but we kept edging away at it and edging away at it. And as somebody described it was, all oh, the ducks were on the wall. We were on the line, so we were hoping that it would be this year, next year. And like that too for any other tidy towns, villages and towns that's out there that think, oh no, we can't go any further. You keep tipping at it and you keep working away and keep chipping at it. You'll get there. Look at how proud we are today. Great. And Louise, um, a big theme for this year was caring for our environment. So how did Glasslock incorporate that into your entry this year? Well, we do indeed have a wonderful landscape in Glasslock and um, we have a natural landscape and environmental um, plan. We're looking after our green landscapes and all our heritage. We're very blessed in Glasslock with our trees, our hedgerows, all our ivy, our famine walls. We have so much um, I suppose, biodiversity in the village and we really um, built on that over the years looking at the adjudicators reports and, and, and seeing where we could enhance what we have in planting more trees thinking of the climate change which is very topical at the moment and I suppose just um, continually um, trying to improve what we already have. Great, thank you very much and congratulations. A double celebration today for Glasslock who also took home the award for Ireland's tidiest village. Now other winners today were Westport who won the award for uh, the tidiest large town Black Rock in County Louth, Ireland's tidiest small town and finally Ennis in County Clare who brought home the overall prize for Ireland's tidiest large urban centre. Sharon. Laura, thanks indeed for that and congratulations to all of those people who put in so much hard work throughout the year. Now it's time for business news and here Here's Will Goodbody. Thanks, Sharon. Well, shareholders at Providence Resources have approved a plan to sell new shares in the company in order to raise $3.7 million. The money may be required by the oil exploration firm because of ongoing delays in receiving a $9 million loan advance from Chinese investor Apec Energy Enterprises. The money is needed to cover the exploration costs at the firm's Barry Row site off the Cork coast. Providence has given Apec until close of business today to deliver the funding. Insurance Ireland has called on the Minister for Justice to immediately begin the process that will lead to the recalibration of personal injury awards here. The organisation says until key sections of the Judicial Council Act are put into effect to enable the establishment of the Council and its Personal Injuries Committee, the process of reforming awards cannot take place. The rising cost of insurance, driven by the cost of personal injuries claims, has been a significant challenge for consumers and for businesses for some time. The government hopes those costs can be brought down by a recalibration of the awards paid out. Under the Judicial Council Act passed last summer, the job of doing that will fall to the Council's Personal Injuries Committee. But so far neither the Council nor the Committee has been set up, and so the recalibration process cannot begin. In a statement, Insurance Ireland today called on the Minister for Justice to end the delay and begin the process. However, the Department of Justice said Charlie Flanagan expects to see the Judicial Council being established by the end of this year, and steps are being taken to facilitate its establishment within that time frame. A year ago, the Personal Injuries Commission found the average personal injury awards here are 4.4 times greater than they are in the UK. Asking prices for property here fell during the last quarter. New data has found, according to the latest myhome.ie Davy House Price Report, prices being sought have dropped by 2.8% between July and now. Over the 12 months to today, asking prices did rise, but only marginally at just 0.3%. The average asking price for houses nationally during the third quarter was €269,000. Based on the information, the authors expect that by the end of the year, house asking price inflation will be close to zero. 
The winners of this year's National QMark Awards have been announced. Manor Farm in Cavan was awarded the title of National Winner of the QMark for Hygiene and Food Safety, while Roadbridge in Limerick was the National Winner for Quality Management Systems. The QMark is a symbol that shows a business delivers the highest standards of quality and excellence. It's a very flexible model. We look at leadership and commitment, uh, the customer experience, employee engagement um, and business results. So the, the, the participating companies get a full report on everything they are doing. Um, and a simple way of looking at it is that companies are looking at 100% of their business processes 100% of the time. Thomas Cook customers hit by the travel firm's collapse may have to wait as long as two months to receive a refund. According to the UK Civil Aviation Authority, direct debit customers will be refunded within 14 days, but others will have to wait up to 60 days with 360,000 customers awaiting payment. The CAA said this is three times larger than any previous refund programme and on October 7th it will be launching an online refund system to cope with demand. Economic sentiment here has fallen to a new low this month, according to a new survey, as Brexit concerns mount. The Bank of Ireland Economic Pulse Index, which measures the attitudes of both consumers and businesses, fell 2.9 points during September. The bank said Brexit uncertainty, as well as a general nervousness about the economy, are weighing on households. Taking a look at the markets now, and the ISEC 20 index is 0.7% higher. Ryanair and Origin Enterprises gained. Arista and Cairn Homes are both lower. In London, the FTSE index is down 0.3%. The DAX in Frankfurt is marginally higher. The CAC in Paris is up 0.1%. While in Tokyo, the Nikkei closed 0.5% lower. And on the currencies, the euro buys 88 and a half pence sterling and one US dollar and nine cents. And you can keep up to date on all the business stories throughout the day on rte.ie forward slash business. But for now, it's back to you, Sharon. Thanks, Will. Agardi have recovered a 17th century chalice stole over 21 years ago. It was taken during a burglary at St. Mary's Abbey in RD in 1998. Gardi recovered the chalice after it was advertised for auction last week. And a look at the main news again this lunchtime. The number of people living in emergency accommodation increased again in August with the rise driven by more children becoming homeless. The number of homeless children rose by 70 in the month to 3,848. And that's the lunchtime news from all the team here. Thanks for watching and good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome. For now, a huge degree of uncertainty surrounds the system called Lorenzo, which could come close to our shores later in the week. So the best advice is to keep in touch with our forecasts in the days ahead. Conditions will be unsettled. In fact, we have rainfall warnings in place now. The first ones expiring at four o'clock this afternoon. That's for Cork and for Kerry. But for all these counties, Dublin, Carlow, Kildare, Kilkenny, Wexford, also Wicklow, Tipperary and Waterford, that warning goes out until eight o'clock tonight as 25 to 35 millimetres of rain may fall with the risk of spot flooding, particularly here for southern and eastern coasts, as that heavy rain now is continuing to come up through the country. It'll also be breezy and blustery in that rain today. And still tonight, we'll have fresh and blustery conditions around northern coasts, the winds then tending to be lighter through the southern half of the country, with more showers or longer spells of rain, which again will be heavy at times. So a dull and a damp start to tomorrow, the 1st of October. The weather, though, steadily improving through the day as brighter skies come down from the northwest.